narrating the Battle of Auschwitz as a staff officer in the command headquarters for the coalition. I'll be narrating from that point of view. We've determined that Napoleon is weak. He's been trying to come to some sort of understanding, some sort of agreement. Well, the understanding we've come to is the fact that he's very weak and has to negotiate. Therefore, now is the time for us to attack. As the sun rises, our army begins the attack. Even the Grenadiers under Constantin begin moving off the Pratzen. The sun still rises, but the fog clings stubbornly. The Austrian 5th Corps Cavalry charges between Sokolnitz and Telnitz. Constantin contacts the line around Kobolnitz. The scant French troops abandon Kobolnitz and take position on the hill behind. The advance guard opens an assault on Sokolnitz. The Coalition 4th Corps strikes the French line. Rebershev's 3rd Corps was going to place artillery on the top of the hill, but the French were spotted in the orchard, and they stayed behind it. Combat reports start flooding in. Austrian 5th Corps cavalry pays heavily, but they take the hill. The advance guard drive on Sokolnitz is repulsed. On the right, the French fall back, taking heavy losses. It's after mid-morning. Orders are sent to bypass Sokolnitz with the advance guard and have the 3rd Corps press the French from in front. The Russian guards hold where they are. They're in reserve, kind of a forward reserve, but they're in reserve. Everyone else is ordered to press forward. Fifth Corps' cavalry reforms and presses the French troops. The fog is still holding. The advance guard moves to the left and presses on the French right. Doktorov presses forward in the center. The Austrian 1st Corps assaults Griskowitz, and the cavalry rides hard around the right flank. As the French infantry retreats, French cavalry is exposed. Who are they? Orders were sent, warning of Constantin, of French developments on our right. Constantin repositions, facing north to Kobolnitz. He does bring his artillery forward. Kenmeyer sends word, <clears throat> it is Mirah! This is our worst fear. Napoleon is much stronger than he allowed. It is now noon. The fog of Austerlitz has burned off. What it reveals is no comfort. The advance guard drive on Telnitz. Encounters stiff resistance and the attack is called off.
Third Corps drive into the orchard. They are thrown back. Dr. Oz drive into Puntowitz. The French fall back. North of Puntowitz, the rest of Dr. Oz's corps presses forward. They drive the French back, but their losses are heavy. Mirage surprise attack. Although the French suffer minor casualties, our cavalry are lost. We've been hoodwinked. We believe the French are much stronger than they appeared. Orders are given all along the line. Fall back. Fall back. All along the line, the retreat is sounded. On our far right, Bernadotte's corps appears. Trying not to turn into a panicked mob, the advance guard falls back. The French cavalry swarms into the, our lines as we fall back. Langren's troops form on the Pratzen. Prefrish's 3rd Corps, artillery on the hill, fires to no effect. French appear to be massing on our left flank. Murat's cavalry completes the destruction of the 1st Corps. Kenmeyer has only a few troops left. It's early afternoon and we are forced to try and rebuild our line, to try and get back to ground we can hold. Those tricky French. This is no good. Murat's cavalry is already on the press and we can hear his cavalry approaching. Dr. Op pulls his men back to the Pratzen. Prebyshev pulls back the 3rd Corps in good order. The French artillery opens up on our line. Constantin's guard makes it back to the Pratzen. Will they have time to form their lines? The far left, Liechtenstein tries to hold the 5th Corps together. Form a line. Hold back the French. Langren's 2nd Corps attempts to form a line on the far right. Can he hold it for Colt till Kohlreuth makes it back? The French seem to be condensing their lines. Kenmeyer pulls his few remaining troops back. French cavalry charge our far left. It's early afternoon and the French cavalry is defeated east of Telnitz. One bright spot in a dark day. It's now mid-afternoon. These French have wings. The remnants of Ken Meyer's corps reach the Pratzen. Lechtenstein's Cav and the Fifth Corps rest and reform. The advance guard reaches the Pratzen. Hrvishev forges a link between the guards and the advance guard. Dokhtarov holds at the Pratzen. We begin to see the French guard. Everybody is here. Constantin brings the guard cavalry around the right flank. The 
French cavalry continues to press ahead. Destruction of the cavalry on our left flank seems to have slowed the French down. Our line is forming up. We just might hold. It's late afternoon. Liechtenstein secures our left flank. Napoleon's French guard advances. In the south, the French inch forward. French artillery in the north opens up. Driving our lines back. These French are tenacious. They'll stop at nothing. From the Pratson, Lons artillery opens up on the cavalry. To no effect. It's as if the whole French line is menacing forward. Frebuchet's artillery opens up on those menacing French, to no effect. Korath hasn't given up yet as his corps streams back. Constantin sounds the charge. Morale's cavalry drives them back. Guards artillery in the center fires on the French, driving them back. Raz cavalry charges. Half Constantin's cavalry is destroyed, but they still hold. The Russian artillery opens up on the approaching heavy cav, to no effect. Until the cavalry is removed, Fourth Corps baggage is in jeopardy. The French are relentless, and they press forward. Constantin pulls his guard back. The advance guard redeploys its cavalry. The advance guard artillery opens up on the French. This time it drives them back. Bernadotte, First Corps cavalry, attacks our flanks. Murat, in a frenzy, cannot be stopped. Jokhtrov moves to support the artillery. And his artillery, from the Pratzen, opens up on the French, driving them back. They are going to pay dearly for the Pratzen. Pribyshev's artillery opens up, to no effect. The God Imperial closes on the Pratzen. The French are forming. The Austrian 5th Corps opens up to win the day. The cavalry attack. The French are able to hold them off and retreat in order. Murat's attack. The charge fails to dislodge the Russians and they fall back. We pull our artillery to safety and not without stubbing our toes, we are able to drive back the heavy cavs. Last efforts before the sun has fallen. The Austrian First Corps. All that's left is a detachment, but they take their part in defending the Pratzen. Liechtenstein's Fifth Corps disappears into the darkness. Advance Guard takes position on the flank. They press forward. With Langren, they surround them. The guard charges to close the deal. Murderous fire from Dr. Oz's artillery drives back the French Imperial Guard. The French begin assaulting the Pratzen. The final, desperate, fights. Advance guard artillery on the Pratzen. The French assault failed. Prebyshev's troops in the center. 
Herbichev bludges the French nose and falls back. The assault on the guard grenadiers. The grenadiers hold. The Russian guard has made the French pay dearly and given no ground. Ross Hussars. Are eliminated. That was no surprise. But here we have the Chasseurs à Cheval. Kamensky's division protects the artillery and drives off the cavalry. French infantry assaulting Coleray's artillery. The assault fails and the artillery is pulled back. A swarm of cavalry on our right flank, a brave detachment, holds them off. It's full dark. The coalition forces have held. Napoleon has failed at Austerlitz. Good game.